Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to 11B. Let me just move my little face down here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I do notice there's about, I guess, 20 views, and I'm really happy about that. So if it's helping you, great. So what I'm going to do today is we've got some new adjectives to talk about clothes. So we're going to start here, and we're going to show the picture to give it a little bit of context. And my face is still in the way. Well, let's put it over here then. Let's make this a little bigger. There we go. Okay. So here we go. We've got the man here. The man's pants are baggy. Baggy means, you know, baggy pants means like they look big. They're too big for your body. So this one, definitely false. Okay. They're not baggy. His legs look very thin. Next, his jacket is fitted. Well, it, fitted means like, it fits your body perfectly, like it kind of matches your body shape. So this one is true. If we look at the picture, it looks like it fits his body perfectly. He looks casual, definitely not, okay? He looks quite uh, formal. He's got a suit on, okay? So yeah, I, I would definitely say that uh, he looks very, very formal, okay? Very nice suit. I quite like it. All right. So let me close that. And then down here, we've got some more words here. So kind of the opposite. So loose and bag, or sorry, I shouldn't say opposite. They're kind of the same meaning. Loose and baggy are almost the same. So you could say loose clothes or baggy clothes. Fitted and tight, very similar. Okay. But fitted has the feeling of you had it made for your body. Tight could just be a shirt that's too small. Okay. And casual, opposite, dressy. That's why they put the arrow here because it has the, the opposite meaning. Okay. All right. So here, answer the questions and make some notes. Uh, when do you dress up? Okay. Dress up means to wear special clothes. You look really nice. For me, Maybe I dress up for a wedding or sadly a funeral or maybe a job interview. You want to look really nice. Think about your own personal style. How do you describe it? Um, my own personal style would be very simple. I kind of get the same pants and same shirts and I get a few colors and that's it. That's my style. All right. And I try to match the colors. Uh, next, do you like to be comfortable or stylish? Uh, definitely, hmm, that's hard to answer. I, I guess I don't want to look bad, but I don't care about stylish. So it's kind of weird. Like I never check new fashion. I just have a feeling like what looks okay on my <laughs> big body. And yeah, but again, I do care, but just not too much, I guess, would be the best way. Okay, and there's these people here. All right, so let's move on uh, to the next one. And this is where, of course, make sure you have your subtitles on. It's a lot of words and the reading is quite fast. So subtitles will be below. And just try to catch the key adjectives and clothes, you know, suit or skirt and tight or, you know, colors, things like that. Focus on the vocabulary and don't worry if you you know, don't quite understand the full thing. Okay. So here we go. And try to put this in a good spot. Business casual. What's that? What do people wear when they go to work every day? There isn't one easy answer to this question. The dress code a set of style rules for a group of people in one office is different from the dress code in another. But there is one style that is more popular at work these days. It's called business casual. What is it exactly? Business casual is a kind of dress code. It's not too dressy and not too casual. For men, it means no suit but also no sneakers. 
In this style, men wear a nice dress shirt with a dark colored jacket, for example, navy blue. They also wear dress pants in gray or light gray, but not black. A nice pair of jeans is okay too. The pants aren't baggy. On their feet, they wear brown dress shoes and boots in the winter. Women wear a nice blouse and a fitted jacket. The blouse covers their shoulders. They also wear nice dress pants or jeans or a medium length skirt. On their feet, flats, comfortable shoes without heels, are okay, but flip flops, light rubber sandals, are not. Men say they like business casual because they don't have to wear a tie. Women like it too. They don't have to wear heels. Business casual isn't too dressy. That's more comfortable for everyone. Great. So that was not too long. Let's go through the questions. And of course, you can check them again. And starting here. Okay. So the first one is read, you know, the first two paragraphs. How is business casual described? Okay. It's the same in every, in every company. It's not very popular today. It's between casual and dressy. It's not a dress code. Hmm. Kind of two answers look better than others. It's C. It's between casual, like kind of comfortable and dressy, which is wearing like really nice clothes. Okay. So let's, uh, that's what business casual means, according to this article. Next. All right. Then we go over here. All right. Now, they talk about like the clothes that they wear. Okay. And again, you can go back and check again, but I'm just going to go through the answers and try to put my face somewhere. Here we go. All right. So men, this is upper body. Men, a nice dress shirt with dark colored jacket, women, a nice blouse and a fitted jacket, lower body, dress pants in light gray or a nice pair of jeans, women, a nice, or sorry, nice dress pants, jeans, or a medium length skirt. Okay. That's a good expression there. Medium length. You can have medium length hair, medium length skirt, or medium length dress. Okay. And for feet, well, brown dress shoes, Boots in winter, and for the ladies, flats. Um, I I don't say flats, but like they're just a shoe again, like they said in the article, with no heels. So that's what they were focusing on there. All right, and we'll discuss the questions. Not very good for online, so let's go over here. Okay, so now we have the listening. Okay, in your opinion, what items are not appropriate? for a job interview. Appropriate means like not okay. Check your answers. So, you know, I'll just say them and you can have your own thinking. You've got boots, a hat, a jacket, jewelry, a t-shirt, a sweater, sneakers, a nice shirt or blouse. Okay. Now, if we look at the word bank here, when your clothes match, they have this, th sorry, they have the same or a similar color and style. Your shirt and your pants don't match, like if the color and the style don't match. Okay, so match just means like the, the top and the bottom, they go together well. All right. Okay, so Diego wants to get a job at his school. He's going to the interview now. What do you think he's wearing? Discuss with a partner. So here's Diego, right? Doesn't look bad, but not sure about ready for an interview. Okay. Let's see. Maybe an interview for sports team. <laughs> anyway, let's have a listen and go in for that. Okay. So Diego, what is Diego wearing right now? Listen and match the words. So you've got the colors over here, brown, black, blue, bright red, light colored, and you've got tie, shoes, jacket, shirt, pants. Here we go. Where are you going, Diego? Oh, hi. I have a job interview today. I'm really excited. That's great. But, um, can I say something? Sure, of course. Your clothes, they're nice, but they don't match. 
What do you mean? Well, you're wearing a brown jacket with black pants. Okay. And you're wearing a blue shirt with a bright red tie. Well, I can wear a different jacket. No, I like the jacket. I think you need to change your pants. They're too dressy. Uh, I have some gray dress pants. That's perfect. Say, what job are you interviewing for? It's at school. It's a part-time job with one of my professors. Oh, you don't need to wear a tie then. No tie? Really? Well, you know your professor, right? A tie seems kind of dressy. I guess you're right. Okay, no tie. Hey, do you like my shoes? They're new. They look nice, but the color is kind of light. I have some darker ones. They're brown. That sounds better. Well, good luck with your interview. Thanks. All right, let's check those answers. Okay, so for the first one, it's a brown jacket, a black, or sorry, black pants, blue shirt, bright red tie, and light colored shoes. Okay, so let me close that. And here we are. Listen for details and infer. Now, infer means to use your thinking and, and like have a guess. Okay, so how does Diego change his clothes? Write the new items below. Okay, so let's have a listen and see how he changes. Okay, here we, let me make this a little more comfortable. There we go. Okay, let's begin. Where are you going, Diego? Oh, hi. I have a job interview today. I'm really excited. That's great. But, um, can I say something? Sure, of course. Your clothes, they're nice, but they don't match. What do you mean? Well, you're wearing a brown jacket with black pants. Okay. And you're wearing a blue shirt with a bright red tie. Well, I can wear a different jacket. No, I like the jacket. I think you need to change your pants. They're too dressy. Uh, I have some gray dress pants. That's perfect. Say, what job are you interviewing for? It's at school. It's a part-time job with one of my professors. Oh, you don't need to wear a tie then. No tie? Really? Well, you know your professor, right? A tie seems kind of dressy. I guess you're right. Okay, no tie. Hey, do you like my shoes? They're new. They look nice. But the color is kind of light. I have some darker ones. They're brown. That sounds better. Well, good luck with your interview. Thanks. And again, let's check those answers. So the jacket, uh, right, no choice. Pants, gray, you know, no, NC is no change. <laughs> it's not uh, NC dino. Anyway, no change, gray dress pants. Change to those. Next one, no change. Tie, no tie. Okay, because he was going to have an interview with his professor. And shoes, dark brown dress shoes. Oops, hard to see. And there you go. All right, so let me close that. All right. And again, this would be great if we were in class and wanted to chat, but not for today. Today, Ooh, look at all this grammar. Okay, now don't be too scared. They're focusing on count and non-count nouns, okay? So, English divides nouns into things called countable or countable nouns and things we call non-countable nouns. Now, this is an annoying part of English. Countable nouns are singular, one thing, and plural equals two or more things. For example, I have four ties. You can count them, one, two, three, four. But none of them match the shirt, okay? Next, non-countable nouns only have singular form. They don't have a plural form. For example, 
what kind of jewelry do you like? And, you know, you can ask yourself, well, why don't we say jewelries? Well, we just don't. Okay. You know, you could say, I have lots of jewelry. If you want to say how many jewelry you have, you'd have to say, I have 10 pieces of jewelry. It's kind of like water, right? I have a lot of water or I have four cups of water. Now, the one way that I like to explain this, because it is strange, countable nouns, uh, I don't even know if I want to say it, but anyway, <clears throat> countable nouns, if you asked two people to draw two bananas, their pictures will look the same. Like a banana is a banana, but jewelry has many different shapes. If you ask someone to draw two jewelry, they might draw, you know, like a bracelet or a necklace or earrings. And same with water, right? If you ask someone to draw water, they might, one person might draw a cup of water. The other person might draw a bottle of water. It's not really the same water, is it? So it's my little atom way to explain the difference. Now, for this level, that's all you need to worry about. You just have to remember countable, non-countable. But I try to say like countable nouns have a shape, apple, chair, but furniture is uncountable. We did last week is uncountable because there are many different shapes. I don't know if that helps, but it's just a different way to think about it rather than maybe just memorizing. Now, one other thing I'll mention before we continue, if you do keep a vocabulary journal, just make sure next to a noun, you write C for countable or NC for non-countable. Some people just prefer to memorize. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's part of the language learning. Okay. Next one. So that's a lot of explaining for non-count and countable. Use an a uh or an an before a singular countable noun, right? A tie, a shirt. Okay, I need a new jacket for my interview. Don't use a or an before non-countable nouns. I need new jewelry. So there's no a. Uh. And as I mentioned every class, a uh equals one. But since these are non-countable, there's no a. Uh. Use some for general amounts, okay? Use it with plural countable nouns. I have some nice shirts. Oh, this is nice. Use some with non-countable nouns too. I need to buy some new furniture, okay? So use a pair, use a pair of, right? A pair of to count things. There are always plural plants, okay? A pair of pants, okay? A pair of pants. Why? Again, because there's two, a pair of pants, a pair of socks, a pair of jeans. You can also use pair of to count things that come in sets, like shoes, a pair of shoes. Uh, common non-countable nouns, furniture, information, jewelry, mail, money, music, and vocabulary. Okay, so these are common non-countables. Okay, now we're going to go down here. And we're going to do okay or not okay. So let's do this one. So, of course, this would be a great time for you to pause the video, but let's just go through it. So do you want to buy a new shoes? Well, you've got the S there, shoes. So no, not okay. Do you want to buy new shoes? Do you like to wear bright colors now this is okay all right um because you've got bright colors do you wear school uniform well there's no s uniform is countable so this is not okay it should be do you wear a school uniform do you sometimes wear a jewelry well we talked about jewelry being not countable so it's not okay it should be do you sometimes wear jewelry. Next, what are some styles you like? Well, that's okay because we've got some here and styles. Good, good, good. Do you like a hip hop music? Music is uncountable. So it should be, do you like hip hop music? Uh, bye-bye. 
Do you have a lot of homeworks? Homework is also uncountable. So not okay. Sh right? S, bye bye. Do you have a lot of homework? And last, is it easy for you to learn new vocabularies? Vocabularies, not countable. So that one is not okay. It should be. Is it easy for you to learn new vocabulary? No IES at the end. Okay, so let me close that. And let's go down here. Um, well, we don't have to rewrite them to make them correct, but let's just see what the book has here just to show it one more time. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Do you want to buy new shoes? Here, we'll just show them all and you can come back and pause it. So here, do you want to buy new shoes? Do you wear a school uniform? Do you sometimes wear jewelry? Do you like hip hop music? Do you have a lot of homework? Again, no S here. Is it easy for you to learn new vocabulary? No S down here. Okay, so let's close this. And let's go to the vocabulary exercise over here. Of course, now you should be pausing the video and giving it a try. But here we go, I'm gonna give you the answers. Okay, so you've got choices of a, uh, un, or X means neither. Okay, now how am I going to make this a little prettier? There we go. So do you wear jewelry? Jewelry is uncountable. So X, only a wedding ring, because one, you can count ring. And you might think, well, jewelry, they didn't say jewelry. They said ring. We can say two, three rings or one ring or a ring. I need mm, pair of gloves. Remember what goes before pair of? Always a pair of. That's one you just need to memorize, a pair of gloves, a pair of, a pair of, a pair of, because it's one. You could say two pairs of, but they didn't. They said one or a pair of. Sorry, but I have to do homework. Homework is uncountable, so no. How much money? Money is uncountable, so nothing. Uh, I think, oh, look, no S. This is a trick one. It's a dollar. There's no S. Two dollars or a dollar? Oh no, it's raining. I have a jacket. Okay, I don't have a jacket, excuse me. Don't worry, I always have an umbrella in my bag. We can share it. Next, do you wear mm, dress clothes to work? Do you wear dress clothes to work? So again, clothes, I know there's an ES, <laughs> but it's uncountable. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really want to stress that. <laughs> yeah. Clothes are uncountable, even though there's an S. Sorry, guys. Um, I wear dress shirt, countable. So a dress shirt, but okay. No, because pants, even though there's an S, uncountable. Usually a pair of jeans. So with these kind of pants, if you said pair of, that's the countable for the jeans, a pair of jeans, a pair of pants, but just pants is uncountable. Okay. If you need to watch the video again to hear that, and again, it's just a rule. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look at the list of items, complete the task. Which ones can take a pair of, as I just mentioned, check your answers. Well, let's see those. So which ones have a pair of? All right. So a pair of blouse? No. Here, I'll, I'll just show the answers. But of course, pause the video and have a think. Here they are. Okay. So which ones can take a pair of? Check your answer. A pair of clothes? Yes. A pair of gloves? Yes. A pair of sneakers? Yes. Um, a pair of socks? Yep. And a pair of sunglasses. The one way to think about it is maybe two, right? With with pants, you have two legs. Sneakers, usually two. Socks, two. Sunglasses, I guess two eyes. <laughs> Gloves, two hands. And clothes, just remember pair of clothes. All right. Uh, let me close. 
What was that? I got a little tickle in my throat. All right, let's go back to the book and go over next page. So let's have a look at the global voice. I'm not sure how many people watch this, but it's kind of useful, okay? So it says, look at the photo and read the caption. Caption, the caption of the words, then guess the answers to the questions. Well, we're not really going to do that much, but here's the photo, okay? Uh, the caption is, okay, stylish bicycles, the streets of London. So these are all stylish people riding, right? And it's, you know, talk about what we see. Well, let's just jump in, okay, and do the video. Okay, so let's get started. Or sorry, do the pictures first. So here are the answers, right? It's a rough and thick, okay, fabric, the fabric here. And it's an expensive fabric, okay? So rough and thick because they're old. Okay, in those pictures. So yeah, that's that's how we would describe it. And then down here, watch the first part of the video and answer the questions. Let's go in there. And let me make myself disappear so it looks a little nicer. There we go. And yeah, let's do it. Okay, maybe it doesn't want to play there. Okay, we'll play it like this. Welcome to the Tweed Run, the UK's most stylish annual cycling event. Every year in May, people come together to dress up in traditional British clothing and explore the city of London on vintage bikes. So this is the Tweed Run, um, which is a cycle ride around London that we take and do every year which um, brings about 800 people all together dressed in their finest tweed um, with their beautiful bikes and we stop for tea along the way and go for a lovely lunch and then it all closes up with a fantastic prize giving ceremony. Tweed is a popular fabric from the early 20th century. It's a rough and thick material and it isn't cheap. People usually use tweed to make fitted dressy clothing, like suits, jackets, hats, and skirts. So for many people, the Tweed Run is a great excuse to leave their casual clothes at home and have fun with fashion. It's just great seeing people really dressed up. You know, the world spends its life in gray jersey and one day a year, the world's in, you know, brightly coloured tweeds, and it really makes, makes a great big difference. But the tweed run isn't just about clothes. It's also a great way to explore the city, meet new people, and most importantly, have fun. It's about taking part in a community spirit and uh, that's really what it's about, and enjoying the atmosphere of London. <laughs> hey, let's check those answers. I'll just push the button. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff. They have fun, they have lunch, they meet new people, they stop for tea, and they wear bright clothes. Okay, you can't see me, but I'm still here. Okay, all right, so we're going to watch the video one more time, and, you know, we're going to match the words or the numbers on the left with the letters on the right. So let's do that.
Hmm. Hard to make this pretty. Well, we'll uh, we'll put it there at least. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, let's do it. Welcome to the Tweed Run, the UK's most stylish annual cycling event. Every year in May, people come together to dress up in traditional British clothing and explore the city of London on vintage bikes. So this is the Tweed Run, um, which is a cycle ride around London that we take and do every year which um, brings about 800 people all together dressed in their finest tweed um, with their beautiful bikes. And we stop for tea along the way and go for a lovely lunch. And then it all closes up with a fantastic prize giving ceremony. Tweed is a popular fabric from the early 20th century. It's a rough and thick material and it isn't cheap. People usually use tweed to make fitted dressy clothing, like suits, jackets, hats, and skirts. So for many people, the Tweed Run is a great excuse to leave their casual clothes at home and have fun with fashion. It's just great seeing people really dressed up. You know, the world spends its life in grey jersey, and one day a year, the world's in, you know, brightly coloured tweeds, and it really makes, makes a great big difference. But the tweed run isn't just about clothes. It's also a great way to explore the city, meet new people, and most importantly, have fun. It's about taking part in a community spirit and uh, that's really what it's about, and enjoying the atmosphere of London. <laughs> okay, I guess I can come back. One sec. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's check those answers. Okay, it's a stylish cycling event. Traditional British clothing. Vintage bikes. Vintage, I think you use this word in Korean as well. It just means old and stylish, beautiful bikes, popular fabric, and casual clothes. Okay, so let me close that. Of course, you can go back and watch it. And we'll leave it with that nice picture there. All right. Well, thank you very much if you're still watching. Um, if you would love to leave, if you would like to leave a comment, awesome. And yeah, I'm really happy that some people are watching these videos. I can see the statistic. You don't have to. Again, I'm here for people that want to learn. That's that's my mission, okay? Uh, just give you all the tools and all the love and energy to, to allow you to study. And if you want to, great. If you don't want to, perhaps you have some other talent you're good at, no worries. All right, people, saying goodbye, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>